Good evening and welcome to the Monday, April 6, 2015 Board of Education meeting. We will start the meeting off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With the uh, board's concurrence, uh, I'd like to move a couple of items up on the agenda, recognizing that there are some people here that uh, uh, would, would ordinarily not be here and try to send them on their way to, to, uh, to enjoy the warm weather. Uh, item uh, 8.1 on the agenda, Dr. Freeman, is to recognize the Guilford Before and After Care Program. And then we will also move up 9.2, which is a textbook recommendation, and 9.5. Uh, I'm sorry, 9.4, which is uh, the district safe school climate plan. Um, Dr. Freeman, do you want to talk about under Superintendent's Report 8.1? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd be happy to. Um, we wanted to take this opportunity to remind the board and the community about an important partnership in, in the Guilford community. Since 1978, Guilford Before and After School Care Program has been providing service to the, Gil the children of Guilford at the Leet Elementary School and at Cox Elementary School and at the Lakes Elementary School. Students in those programs have received care both before and after school, as the name implies, um, over school vacations. Um, students in half-day kindergartens up until this year received care for the balance of the day. Um, um, early open or delayed openings, early closings, um, this service has been provided to the children of, of Guilford and to their families. Um, Roseanne Kelly has been part of the before and after care program since 1986 and since 1995 she has been the director of that program and growing the services that that program has offered to our students. Um, this year Roseanne has announced that this will be her last year with the before and after care program um, and I have asked her to join us here tonight. I thought that there was no better opportunity for her to remind us of the importance of this partnership and for us to have the opportunity to express our appreciation for the service that she's provided to the children of Guilford. Roseanne, do you mind joining us? <coughs> I want to thank you so much for having me here tonight. I worked for Guilford Before and After School since 1986. In 1995, I was given the opportunity and the position as the director of the program. I had a vision of what I wanted Guilford Before and After School to become. My goals were to increase enrollment, which in 1995, there were only 62 children registered. I knew enrollment would increase if, I, if the programs were available at each elementary school. I proceeded to have Guilford Lakes licensed as Cox and Leet were already licensed. Children were being bused from Leet to Cox, from Cox to Leet, from Lakes to Leet. Each year I was very persistent with elementary principals asking, do you have a classroom for us? Do you have a place for us? Do you have room for us? Parents would like their children to remain in the same elementary school. So finally, by the school year 2003-04, our programs were available at Cox, Lee, and Lakes. Children who needed care could remain in their own school. It eliminated busing. So before school, AM and PM kindergarten, and after school in their own school, it was great. And I thank all those principals, Michael Biddle, Mary Leventhal, Rosemary Waldron, Nancy Bishop, who supported us and were instrumental in the process. Enrollment increased in 2003-04. There were 355 students attending. In 2003, we began participating in a national celebration called Lights on After School, which is a project of the After School Alliance. It's a day that we raise national and local awareness of the importance of after school programs. And each year, I ask parents to comment what does after school mean to you? Their comments made me more passionate, more committed to the before and after school program. In 2008, our after school children participated in the Connecticut after school art and essay contest. 
Out of 67 participants, 20 of our Guilford student, students were recognized as winners, and their artwork was displayed at the legislative, leg, legislative office building in Hartford. I, along with the parents and children, attended an awards ceremony. It was quite an honor. So in 2009, our program was recognized by the Connecticut After School Program, After School Network, as one of the top 10 programs in Connecticut. So because the children enjoyed this art show so much, I decided, well, we're going to start our own art show. So in 2010, the children started the art show, and they're now working on art that will be displayed May 14th uh, at Calvin Lee. <clears throat> In addition, on that evening, I give the parents a pasta dinner, and they're very excited to come, and they look at their children's artwork, and they're very grateful. Last year, we honored Nancy Bishop uh, at the art show. It was our fifth art show, and we honored her because she supported our program for 15 years. And any of you who would like to come, May 14th, 6.15 to 8 o'clock, you can come to Calvin Lee, and you can see the children's artwork displayed. In 2010, I was asked by Pupil Services if I would collaborate with ESY and offer a summer program. I agreed because I knew we could be of assistance to the ESY program and to our own program. Parents continually asked me, can't you have a summer program? Would you have a summer program? So the decision I made, I think, had a positive effect on everyone, ESY, the Guilford After School families, and my staff. The summer program, although challenging, is a rewarding addition to our school year program. In 2010, our enrollment was 412 children. This year has been a transition year for our program, with all day kindergarten being provided to Guilford families. We're adjusting to the changes, and I realize that families will continue to need before and after school, early dismissal, recess week care, and the summer program. My years with Guilford before and after school have given me the opportunity to meet and interact with superintendents, teachers, secretaries, nurses, social workers, pupil services, transportation, dining, facilities, the town of Guilford, and the Guilford community members. In more ways than one, they've assisted in the success of our program. Presently, I thank Dr. Freeman, Vince Augustine, Bill Grimm, Jill Hale, for their support, as well as my own board of directors. And as you can imagine, there are always times when staff encouragement is very important. And so I gave, I've always given them notes of inspiration. And one of the last ones I gave them was, you handle your complex job well when you help parents appreciate the opportunities they have to enjoy their children before those chances melt away like ice cream on a dessert plate. <laughs> Let me conclude with our mission statement. Our mission is to provide a safe, nurturing, inclusive, and developmentally appropriate environment for young children who need out-of-home care during the day. When I retire in June, I feel I have left a strong foundation, and the program will continue to serve the families of Guilford. Thank you for allowing me to share with you my years at GASC. Thank you. Thank you for all your years. One of the, the, the great privileges and one of the, the uh, exciting parts of, of our work here on the board is to, is to recognize the hard work that many people, hundreds of people do to make uh, education in Guilford what it is. There is no way that the board, the parents, the children of the Guilford community can repay you for everything that you've done. This has been an outstanding program. It's been a program that has touched thousands of young lives and, and, and when, they, when they are in need of the most, uh, the most help, the most guidance, the most love, the most compassion, the most, uh, the most education. And so we can't do very much. We can't do anywhere close to uh, recognizing everything that you've done for our community, but we do have a certificate uh, in recognition of your 29 years of service in this program, and you have the thanks and the heartfelt appreciation of the entire Guilford community. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And Dr. 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 Myers is, is closer to a consumer, actually, of, uh, <laughs> of, of uh, this, given his, uh, his family's involvement. 
And I'd like to amend what uh, Dr. Friedman said. It's not just a program for the kids. It's a program for the parents. Thank you. And you have done an outstanding job. I know that because Bailey and Clara Myers attended the after-school yes. program at Lakes. And I dropped in and visited just to see what was going on, and I could not have been more impressed. Okay. So you join us retirees in, uh, in June, and you know that you retire for a job well done. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Jack. Thank all of you. We're good, thank you. Well, turning to, I guess, the little more mundane, uh, although it's still exciting. And I do want to, by the way, thank Dr. Myers. You, uh, you reminded me that, uh, that our old, our, our, our longtime friend, uh, Suzanne Carlson, is back uh, uh, where she belongs, sitting at Board of Education meetings. Uh, probably Welcome our back. most uh, steady, uh, our most committed, our most uh, passionate observer and contributor. And so, Suzanne, we are delighted that you could be back. Uh, we hope you didn't give the doctors too hard a time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we know that you were anxious to get back here, and we're delighted that you are uh, back. Um, do we want to go to 9.2, which is the textbook? Uh, this is just a receive tonight, is that correct? Okay, why don't we go to that? Yeah, I think we'd be happy. Sure. So um, I'll ask Sarah Sandora, chairperson of the science department at Guilford High School, to uh, introduce a textbook. You have a description of the text in your packet, 9.2. I actually have an updated version that I'm going to pass around. <laughs> And this is for environmental science, a new course at Guilford High School that uh, will be introduced in the 2015-2016 school year. So Sarah? Okay. Um, we are very excited to be offering this course at Guilford High School next year, something that I've had on my mind for a long time. And circumstances presented themselves that we can introduce this course. And so we formed a committee with four of the GHS science teachers, and we unanimously chose what we think is a wonderful book, Environmental Science, which I will provide to you tonight. And we had several reasons for choosing this book. First and foremost, the sequence of this textbook follows very closely with what we had in mind for the sequence of the course. It begins with basic principles of ecology, ecological dynamics, um, biogeochemical cycles, human population growth, some concepts that students have touched on in prior years at GHS. And this course expands on that. It delves deeply into them and it focuses a lot on sustainability and human impact on the environment. Um, it is a very engaging textbook. They have partnered with National Geographic, which provides a great deal of maps and references and beautiful pictures in the textbook. It has case studies that start off every chapter, which make the information very relevant to the students. So the first thing they see in each chapter is a case study related to the content contained in that chapter. And there are additional case studies throughout. They have features such as consider this, which poses critical thinking types of questions, discussion prompts for students to consider as they read the textbook. Um, and this is a very recent edition. This is actually copyright 2016, but it will be available in September for our students. And that's really important. As I'm sure you can imagine, there are a lot of concepts that change very rapidly in science. So this textbook allows very recent studies, new information, um, and current issues and data to be presented in the textbook. So as you can see, we are requesting 70 copies for next year with a one-year subscription to the MindTap, which is an e-resource for students that provides additional information. It provides the actual text online for the students. There are features such as a dictionary, um, a text-to-speech option, integrated um, interactive flashcards. So we are all very much on board with this textbook, and um, hopefully after you take a look at it, you will approve it as well. Do you have any questions for me about it? 
questions, thoughts? This is just a receive tonight, okay. so uh, the book will be available uh, for any of us and also at central office for any parent or anybody else in the community that wants to look at it. Uh, um, the, the number that you're proposing here, 70, is that? 70. What, what's the, yes. what's the uh, um, basis well, for Well, you know, we're, we're in the process of registration, and as we're looking at preliminary numbers, we're looking at about three sections of this. So that will cover that and also allow for a couple in-class um, textbooks as a resource. What, what grades is this? Uh, this is for 12th grade. Just 12th grade. Just 12th grade for next year. Okay. And do they have it at different levels? Is it honors level? It's a level two course with a level one option available. Okay. okay we're just going to, is, is it here, the book? Somewhere? It's right here. You have it. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Who would like um, that? You can pass it around. You can okay. just pass it sure. around. Is it on available at Lathrop right. House for you? Yeah, I wouldn't expect that there to be a lot of substantive questions tonight, uh, given we, that we haven't seen this yet. Right. But uh, uh, we will uh, be glad to keep it carried over to the next month's agenda. That gives you, if we assume, if we uh, approve it at the May meeting, does that give you enough time to uh, order it to and order have them? it in yes. place? Yes, that okay. should be fine. Okay. All right. Good. Any, any questions, anybody? Or? Just a comment I would ask if our three student reps have the time to go down to Lathrop House when you're not on vacation to take a look <laughs> at it and you could tell us what you think. Maybe, maybe we could have it sent up here uh, for mm -hmm. a day or two yeah. and uh, <laughs> then it'll get you out of a study hall or something maybe if you take a look at it. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Um, you know, seeing you know, seeing the students sitting there wondering when they're going to be able to go home and start doing right, their homework. Right. Why don't we Why don't we just go to the student representatives' reports? Sure. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Greg Sullivan, and I'm reporting on uh, Melissa Jones tonight. So things going on at Jones right now. The students just raised two thousand seven hundred dollars for Sarah through the Sarah Readathon, and also going on at Jones is. Uh, I believe it's pronounced eSmarts, is visiting um, most of the towns, <coughs> which is teaching about recycling, uh, magnetism, and electromagnetism. And eSmarts is an energy uh, efficiency and renewable energy uh, learning initiative funded by the Connecticut Energy Efficiency Fund. And also on Thursday night at Mosa Jones, uh, there will be a book fair, ice cream social, and art show in which every student will have a work displayed. And then at Adams, uh, the music department dance just happened on March 27th. And so students uh, at the dance could sing karaoke, uh, play ping pong, uh, I believe something about cartoons, uh, Ms. Walker said, <laughs> um, uh, and also dance. And at the dance, the DJs were students from the music groups. Uh, where they got to learn and uh, select music a few weeks before and then practice and uh, <coughs> they apparently did a very good job. Cool. And then uh, soon the eighth graders will be having an assembly, uh, actually tomorrow, uh, with the Celebration Jazz Quintet, which will be playing music paralleling uh, U.S. history from the Civil War to the Great Depression. And the Adams Debate te uh, Team will also travel uh, to John Winthrop Middle School on April 23rd for the South Central Regional, and if they win that, they have a chance to go to states in Hartford. I want to go on to next school. Yes, at Guilford Lakes, uh, the PTO recently brought in John Ajee, who is a very popular children's book author, uh, to speak to the students, telling them a story and illustrating while he spoke, which was definitely an exciting and interesting activity for the kids. Um, similarly, at, similarly, at Cox Elementary School, <clears throat> Bill Harley, a storyteller, songwriter, musician, and author with two Grammys, uh, visited the school this past week to share his stories at the Our Circle of Friends meeting. He later worked with third grade students to teach them how to map, critique, and perform stories. Uh, as part of the fourth grade lunchtime lecture series, students heard from a representative from the New Reach, mm, sorry, from New Reach Li Live Haven, and plans are underway to donate gift baskets with basic kitchen items to help support families in need. Second grade students have just finished their nutrition opinion writing unit and have invited parents in for their annual nutrition fair to explain to them the best way to eat. Uh, at Guilford High School, uh, Voices on the on the April 2nd, so it was just this past Thursday, uh, Voices performed at Wolsey Hall with the New Haven Symphony Orchestra. 
uh, and that was a great success and a really awesome opportunity to sing in an even more professional atmosphere. Um, in other news, Smarter Balanced Testing begins for our juniors uh, in May, which is coming up quickly. Uh, students will, students and parents will get prim will get individual performance reports, and the school will get individual and school reports, which will allow them to uh, compare our school to other schools all over Connecticut. Um, and in my final piece of news, Junior Prom is coming up um, <laughs> on the April 24th, which is a Friday, and that will be taking place at Woodwinds. And it looks like it's going to be a really fun and safe night for the junior class. So at Calvin Lee on March 20th, they had the same author and illustrator, John Aggie, um, present his new book, It's Only Stanley, and he also drew and told stories to the kindergarten, first, and second grade. And also, on March 20th, students displayed a wide variety of learning fair projects, and it's an optional project that allowed students to um, research a topic of their choosing and create a display for other students to see. And Calvin Lee is also in the midst of a four-week cycle of before and after school enrichment activities. And these are focused on art, math, and science. And a second cycle of activities will take place in May. At the high school, um, for seniors, colleges have all gotten back. And so decisions have to be in by May 1st. Um, AP testing begins in May. And today and tomorrow after school, there are opportunities for students to fill out the paperwork for AP tests to save time on test days. And when we get back from spring break, I believe, is sad week. And there, there will be a mock car crash for the seniors. Um, our IB application is in. I believe we got that in. April 1st. April 1st. Yeah. Around April 1st. April 1st. Yeah. Yeah. April 1st. Um, the physics team came in first at a competition at Yale. And uh, also going at the high school, uh, spring sports are starting up uh, right now. So we got all teams going. I think the lacrosse team is practicing right now. Um, and then also re what recently occurred was an assembly, a school-wide assembly with Chris Heron uh, for the Project Purple. And uh, we want to still keep this in the public eye because it had a very clear message. Uh, and Mr. Masseni, uh got two clear messages from it um, that he really took away from it. It's that people who hurt hurt others. and uh, why do people have to change themselves on like Friday and Saturday nights, uh, which he thought was very strong. And uh, I think it really affected the whole school in a good way, uh, change mind about some like uh, decisions people will make. Also going on is uh, parent-teacher conferences are Wednesday and Thursday after April break. And they have a new way of signing up for these, where there's a portal open online instead of the old-fashioned way <laughs> of, uh, of entering it. and. Uh, now they also invite people who don't have computers or access to internet uh, into our library, the town library, or to come uh, call in over the phone. Uh, also going to the high school, the math team was just in a state championship. Uh, and I'm not sure how they did, uh, but I, I hope they did very well. <laughs> um, uh, also our debate team went to the state championship, fi or state championship finals for the first time ever. Uh, which was very good, and the boys' epe team won the state championship for Guilford. Wow, that's great. Very good. We had to get some more <laughs> publicity on that, oughtn't we? That's great. Uh, or the team ought to, I mean, you know, yeah, a state okay. championship. That's uh, the, uh, yeah, so the, um, I'm sorry to correct. Boy, boys foil, the boys foil, foil? team. Oh, foil. The boys okay. foil team won the state champion, and um, a Guilford girl won the state individual foil oh. championship. Seems like we ought to get that out a little bit. We can get a little more PR for that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try to look at that. And then the, the, and the physics, the physics uh, team won a competition at Yale. Do we know any more about that? Mr. Massenti is not here, unfortunately. Mr. Massenti, yeah, uh, sure. I'd like to try to get a little fuller report on that, if we could, from Mr. Massenti, uh, or I will get more information I can guess what teacher you. may have had, what teacher yes. or teachers may have had something to do with that. But, uh, OK, great. Any, any questions? or? So where are you guys going next year, those that are going to college? Um, I will be going to the University of Virginia. Excellent. 
Congratulations. Is that where you Good. went? That's where you Medical went. Medical school, yeah. Medical school. All right. So look up, look up, look up, uh, Dr. Morris. <laughs> <laughs> See what you can find out about the uh, report back, please. Yes. <laughs> and not in Rolling Stone. <laughs> no. What about the rest? The other two? Yeah. Uh, I'm just a junior. Yeah, I'm a sophomore. So. Oh, oh, okay, okay, that's right. Yeah. 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 Not going yet. Yeah. Congratulations. That's outstanding that you're going to go to UVA. Yeah. That's a great school. Yeah, you will good. love Charlottesville, I'm sure. Uh, um, and that's what are you going to what are you going to study uh, if you know? Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. But I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. You yeah, got time. You definitely have right. time. Well, terrific. That, that is outstanding. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Any other questions? Thank you. Work, guys. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And you, you can. And then Mr. Augustine is here, to, I think, to talk about 9.4, which is the District Safe School Climate Plan. This is labeled as an act on, but it's not necessarily an act on. If you wanted to take a, a month or a couple of weeks or a month to look at it, that's total. That's completely fine. Yes, that's right. correct. It's here for your approval, but there's no deadline pending. Right. Okay. Do you want to just, Mr. Augustine, you want to just present this and. <coughs> So the Safe School Climate Plan is here for your approval. Uh, the new statute requires biannual approval um, by the Board of Education. Um, Mr. Augustine uh, chairs the district-wide um, school climate committee, uh, which is an umbrella committee made up of the committee from each of our seven buildings. Um, they have reviewed the policy and pulled it together. It is in a line with the state statutes around bullying. Uh, Vince has been um, very involved and instrumental and um, we have actually had continued conversations at the state level um, about shaping this legislation moving forward. Um, also in the packet for your information are um, question lists that we use in the annual climate survey. Uh, I'll remind you, I'll remind the board that for the first time this year we will be partnering with um, I just lost the name, Panorama, thank you. We'll be partnering with Panorama, a survey company that has been engaged by a number of districts around the state to help us to better um, administer the survey and then better communicate the results that we draw from the survey. Uh, the question sheets that we have given you include the questions that we've used in the past years. Where possible, we want to try to create um, the ability to look back longitudinally, but they also include uh, new questions that are required at the state level this year. Vince, I believe six that are being required of all schools throughout the state. That's right. There's uh, six questions for each. It's essentially the same six questions for each survey group, parents, students, uh, and staff. Um, and we're required to report the results of those six questions. Uh, we can supply the other results as well to the other, from the other questions, but those six we must report to the state. So Vince has been instrumental in preparing the plan as it comes to you. It's here for your approval tonight, but as we said, there's no deadline pending. There's no urgency to your decision tonight. I know Vince is happy to engage in conversation or answer questions. So the, uh, I'm sorry. the survey, um, twice we've done the school climate survey. Is that right? Yes. That's right. Um, and these have similar questions, but it's not exactly the same, right? We can't exactly. It's pretty close to last year's. Um, through uh, work with Panorama, we've been able to update, ask questions a little better, um, solicit the responses, uh, or provide um, responses, I think, in a, a little better uh, light. Um, so who is that administered by the, uh, the climate survey? Where did that come from? In the past, we've administered it ourselves in-house through SurveyMonkey. Panorama is a outside vendor that was contracted by the state of Connecticut. They participated in the development of the teacher and administrator evaluation plans, and I believe that they're contracted with 60 or 80 districts around the state already. So part of what we wanted to draw from Panorama was their experience doing the same thing that we've tried to do. Um, we are required by state statute now to do a climate survey that feeds the administrative and teacher evaluation plan. We're required by a separate statute to do a climate survey that feeds the bullying statute. So districts all around the state have collapsed these two different goals into one survey. Panorama has done that for a number of districts. So we asked them to look at what we had asked in the past, look at what was considered best practice currently in the state and help us find the best way to move forward. We want to draw parallels to the first two administrations, but it's not going to be a one-to-one -one correlation, you're right. Many of the questions from last year, in fact, were um, 
um, taken from the Panorama folks, uh, we, uh, thanks to Dr. Freeman, we had access to some of the questions that were asked in, of, of other, uh, by other districts. Um, so, you know, we were pretty much in line. I, I think one of the exciting things about working with Panorama this year is going to be the, the ability to access the results and to really drive down. Um, in, in the past, we essentially did it by using Microsoft Excel, uh, and it was a tedious process. I think we're going to be able to get um, drill down the data a lot better this year and a lot quicker. Okay, does anybody else have any questions tonight? What's your, what's your pleasure on this? Do we want to consider this tonight or we want to just carry it over to either the workshop meeting or the next regular meeting? There is no rush. I would certainly want to give everybody time to read it. Um, yeah. and, and if you've got questions about it. Uh, I prefer to carry it That's over. fine. Yeah. I'm happy, happy to we, do we are We are anxious to get the survey out um, you know, before the end of the school year. We, we do need to report um, to the state by July, okay. uh, I think so, it's July 12th. But that's an important distinction. The, the survey we've already administered twice before. We've brought the questions here as an informational item. We're certainly happy to receive feedback, but the, the plan which requires board approval stands alone and apart from the survey. We're required to administer a survey, but the state doesn't require approval of the questions. So um, I assume the board would have no issue in the intervening month if we were to administer the survey, get that out with not planning on going out tomorrow. So if you have any comments or questions, either Vince or I would be happy to respond to those before we release the survey. That's fine. Yeah, it's that's fine right. with me. I don't know how the board right. feels about yeah, that's it. But, fine. Um, fine. Yeah, okay. All right. So then we'll, why don't we carry this over to the workshop meeting at the end of the month, and that, that'll give us plenty of time, right? Workshop meeting or the next business or the meeting. Either. Is that enough time if we act on this in May, on the, the, uh, the policy itself? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. let's carry it over to the May meeting great. then. And that's fine. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Vince. Thank All right. You. Now that we've done half the agenda, uh, <laughs> just albeit out of order, uh, why don't we go back to item three and kind of get back on track here if we can, which is action on minutes of uh, various dates. The first is the workshop meeting, February 23rd, 2015. That's Dr. Borland's presentation. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Any changes? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, One abstention. Okay. Ms. Dudley abstains. Uh, 3.2 is the March 9, 2015 regular meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All right. There is, I know there's a correction, if I can just get my fingers on it. I think the votes uh, seem to reflect a 10-person board, uh, yes. which, <laughs> which uh, at least at this moment is not, uh, is not no. the situation. Uh, so I think that all of those need to be, the, the affirmative votes need to be moved down one number um, to make sure that we have nine people voting and not ten. <laughs> After all, this is not <laughs> Chicago. <right? laughs> I, I actually had one um, more correction, if I could, on page four. Um, under 9.3.1, um, uh, says Dr. Balistray stated that capped is being removed as a heading and changed to assessments for requirements for graduation. I would like to add, some, so it really reflects what the point of the change is, and that participation in the statewide mastery examinations in math and English language arts is a graduation requirement as stated, because that is the other point right. of the new policy. And that's this will come discussed. up again tonight, no, no but, but, but we want to make sure that's in the minute. Right. Okay. With those two corrections, is there, uh, what is the, we've made a motion and seconded, right? All in favor of the motion as corrected? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, March 19th was a special meeting relating to a student matter. Uh, present were, I believe, Dr. Moore, Ms. Renner, and Ms. Dudley and myself. So Dr. Moore or Ms. Dudley, if you would make a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? That's Aye. three of us are voting in favor. And is, uh, right. And then uh, finally, March 23rd, 2015, the workshop, which is the teacher board roundtable discussion. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Any changes, corrections? Uh, yes, um, I was unable to attend that, so I should be. Ah. And listed as present, and I was unable to be okay. there. All right, anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, great. And one, obviously, oh, I'm abstention. Sorry. I'm sorry? I, mean, I just abstention. said one abstention. Of course. The reason I just said. Okay, thank you. Uh, that takes care of item three. Uh, item four, public forum for topics on the board agenda. 
Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Uh, Ms. Dudley, you reviewed the uh, expenditures for the month of March? I did. Um, the expenditures for the month of March uh, totaled uh, four million one hundred and eighty thousand nine hundred and seventy six uh, dollars. Um, there wasn't a really anything that was um, very um, outstanding or unusual. Uh, we continue to be uh, a little over in the tuition and transportation items. Uh, one thing I did note that was interesting was uh, additional costs for snow removal, and uh, we're um, not surprised to find that uh, we spent an additional uh, $20,000 uh, for snow removal um, this in this month of March. And other than that, I'd like to make a motion that they uh, the bills be approved as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? We did talk about this in detail in the uh, operations committee meeting, and, and it does appear that we are still within on track to be within budget, uh, maybe even a little bit better, maybe than, a little uh, better. than last uh, month <laughs> uh, with some luck and some careful, uh, careful monitoring of expenses. Any other questions about the expenses or bills? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Recuse. Recused, okay. All right. Uh, item six, communications. Anybody? No? It's been quiet, actually. I, I, I don't know. I haven't really had. I did get, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, if you're a, a, a woman who lives somewhere in Fairfield County, I think, uh, talked to me after the budget meeting. After I got an email meeting, from yes. her. Did, were you, were you, you were there when I was mm -hmm. talking to her. She's, she's shopping districts. It's very interesting. She's comparing. <laughs> A bunch of different towns, like right Avon, I think, is on the list, or Simsbury, or somewhere up there. A couple of towns down in this area. And that was the night that we separated. So she came here and watched this board of education meeting, and then came to the community center to watch the balance of the board of finance hearing as well on the budget. Yeah, uh, she's really doing her homework. Well, she really? she went it's to one of the elementary schools and and talked to the staff there, and she doesn't even live here yet. So anyway, sounds like the kind of person we'd like to have in town, but... Uh, and had very positive things about, to say about Mr. Bowden as well. She called and spoke to Jason in his office as well. Yes, that's true. So anyway, that's about my... I haven't had many, so... <laughs> All right, so we're up to Dr. Freeman uh, 8.2. Whatever happened to the school start time issue? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, we have had continued conversations um, in-house about school start times and I have continued to meet with um, interested community members, uh, local experts and uh, Mr. Bowden and I have also gone to bring in um, outside support where possible. At the meeting that we held on January, in January, uh, approximately a hundred parents I believe came out to speak about school start times and a question came up more than once about the um, the current busing contract and the efficiency of the bus runs and we were challenged if there isn't a more efficient software or somebody else out there who could help us to take a look at this um, we have had at this time multiple conversations um, with the district management company uh, the district management council and this is a group that I've brought to your attention before um, they're out of Cambridge, uh, they work with school systems, and they combine both um, a very clear and balanced instructional awareness with management and efficiencies expertise. They have in the past conducted transportation uh, studies for school districts to simply be more, effic more efficient and more effective and to bring down transportation costs. When we spoke to them about the idea of pairing a transportation study with our interest in start times and student health and wellness and the impact on learning that this could present, um, we found a very interested partner. And we've worked uh, through a number of iterations with DMC. Um, we have at this point um, a proposal that they've put that comes in below our bidding threshold. And I am going to... Um, I believe invite them to partner with us this year. In fact, for what is a reasonable investment, um, if they were to save us one bus run moving forward, they would pay for the study in, multiple, in, in multiples. Um, so what I have done is having had conversation with DMC, 
Um, Mr. Bloss and I had intended to begin a series of meetings with the associations of our various employee groups in the district, and the weather made the scheduling of those very difficult. Um, but with DMC's involvement, with wanting to meet with our, our groups locally, and after another couple of conversations with some of our local experts, I have revised a school start time timeline for you. Um, and I would suggest, I would strongly suggest that I believe this is the way for us to continue this conversation moving forward. At this point, I don't believe that we have a viable window to make a thoughtful change and to advertise a thoughtful change in a way that's fair for this coming September. But I do believe that if we pull together a constituent group in the next month or two that will take this under advisement, if we bring DMC in and they will do a study similar to what we've done both with special education and with our highest achieving students, although in smaller scope, they expect to speak with constituent representatives. Um, they expect to look at our systems, and most importantly, they expect to sit down with our transportation vendor and look very carefully at what, at what they provide. Um, I believe that if there is going to be greater efficiencies found, it is through a partnership of this nature, and I believe if we're going to continue to say that there are no more efficiencies to be found, again, bringing in an outside expert rather than myself, Mr. Bowden, and the bus manager would go a long way to helping the community understand that we've left no stone unturned. Um, so I've put out a proposal for you. It would have us continuing these conversations, in fact, intensifying these conversations from now through September. We would ask for board action on some version of a bus schedule for, for September of 16. And then we would have much of next year to make sure that we fairly and clearly and thoroughly advertise any change that is to happen. I think what we heard more than anything else is if we do anything, it will have an impact throughout this district on students, on families, on activities. Um, and so I would, I would suggest that we continue in, along the calendar that I've proposed. Um, I do want to say strongly, none of this is with the intention of backburnering this issue. In fact, I expect the conversation to pick up intensity and we will be investing funds in the work of DMC. Um, when we talked about bus runs at our last meeting and we talked in really broad strokes, DMC intends to give us bus impact that we will measure in actual student numbers. So if we come back to you and say that we expect some students to be on the bus for longer than an hour, DMC will be able to quantify that we will expect 2,000 students to have all of their runs be an hour or less, but we expect 200 students to be on the bus for between 60 minutes and 80 minutes. We will have that kind of data to work with as we move forward. I think it's a, I think it's a worthwhile investment. I think it will help us to make a better decision moving how, forward. How much is this study going to cost? We're looking at $25,000 for the study, uh, which is before it hits the bidding threshold. Um, it is significantly less than we invested in the um, special education study. It is more, in fact, than we invested in the, the study of high achieving students. Um, I'll point out that a single bus each year costs us approximately $50,000. If they help us moving forward to avoid the cost of one run, this, this study will pay for itself twofold mm -hmm. in one year. Mm -hmm. I think, I think this is a, a good way to proceed. I think we need some professional help to understand how to do this more efficiently. Um, the initial conversations that I had with DMC took place um, among myself, the president of DMC, and Kevin Smith, who is the current superintendent of, of Wilton Schools. And so they were really interesting conversations. DMC, I believe, is excited to do this. I think this is the first time that they have been asked to pair a transportation efficiency study to school start times, and I think they're excited to be part of that work moving forward. <clears throat> this is perhaps a crazy question, but um, at this point, is, is there any, any even ballpark figure of what time-wise could be gained? Um, I mean, if we're talking about this, at least partially, if not largely, um, as a consideration in a change in school start times. Um, I, I can't imagine, not knowing how to do this, um, that this would um, be the only thing 
that would impact that. But it, do we have a sense? Of, I mean, is this a 10-minute gain? Is this a... No. So I'd want to say that I think that um, based on some of the continued conversations that I've had with some of our local experts, so we know that we have the director of the Pediatric Sleep Center at Yale as a resident in our community, and I've continued to meet um, he and I have continued to have conversations. Um, Craig Mullet, who originally brought this to our attention, he and I have continued to have conversation. Um, they believe that the research is silent on any level of benefit for a change that is either um, earlier than 8 o'clock in the morning or less than an additional 35 to 60 minutes of sleep a day. Right. I think, however, that we're dealing with a realistic cap that falls somewhere around 8 o'clock in the morning. We know that we're not going to be able to push all of our schools to a 9 o'clock start time. We know that we're not going to be able to have all of our schools. And DMC asked a really interesting question. They wanted to know, do we want to give them the hard parameters within which they're restricted or do we want them to explore all options? And we said, yes, we want you to do both. So we explained <laughs> what we believe some of our limitations are. Cost is going to be a limiting factor. Our geography is going to continue to be a limiting factor. And I don't think that we could realistically propose a high school start time of 9 o'clock. I think that we heard from students that that's not going to be. But when I proposed to the Craigs, that we do a quick and dirty <laughs> so solution. That's what we're it, yes, um, they, they've sort of embraced the title. Um, <laughs> when I proposed, look, why don't we just do a quick and dirty and take 20 minutes? We're at 7:25 now. What if we went to 7:45 and called it done? Um, they went back to the research and they came back and said, we can't find any comment on yeah, that. Yeah, and I pushed good. because part of the presentation was that this is cumulative. And I said, come on, 100 minutes of sleep has got to be a sick, but they can't find anything in the research base that if you stay, if you stay earlier than 8 o'clock or if you have less than an additional hour a day, nobody's talking about the benefits. There's none of that. Right. So at least as... Um, maybe the standard bearers for the community members who have brought it forward, they would really like to see a deeper conversation and richer options rather than a quick and dirty 20 minutes. In fact, their response was, it might make you and the board feel good, but we don't know that it's going to have any real impact, and why upset, why, why create those ripples if it's not really going to have that measurable impact? So, so this, um, so part of my question was, were, would efficiency in bus runs alone, I mean, what is the sense that that alone is going to provide? Um, we don't know. We don't know. Right yeah. now, okay. locally, in our bus company, we don't think a lot, but we haven't brought DMC to the table yet. So they might right. find something that we haven't seen at this time. So, so you've, you've helped, though, clarify something for me, which is that this um, DMC is hopefully going to help us not only find efficiencies, but help us also with alternative proposals for new start times as well. As okay. a matter of fact, one of the options that they immediately aired that they wanted to look at was a two-tier bus run. And, and we immediately responded and said, well, we had our local folks look at that, and they said, great, we want to look again. Yeah, no, that's so, good. Right, let's they, let's they, have them do that. They Absolutely. want to go back and look at a variety of options, and they're doing it under the umbrella of the times, not just the financial efficiencies. Okay. Okay. So well, there's, a pre there's a decent argument we should do this regardless of the start times, right? Sure. Uh, you know, give them oh, absolutely. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So no, 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 that's right. We could come away saying we've decided not to change anything with start times based on other conversations, including community surveys, but still find efficiencies in our busing. Or we may find that we can minimize the impact to the community in the families because we generated efficiencies right, within right, right. the bus. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. we, we have had a very good series of experiences with having outside mm -hmm. experts take That's a look right. at issues between special ed and the facilities assessment, the needs assessment, and uh, the high achieving learners. I, I think this is money well spent. I, it, it is an investment, but it's likely to return this investment back to us. Is right. the bus company receptive to working with? Very much so. Yep. Yep, they're happy to partner with DMC. They're not at all, they don't feel like we're being aggressive with them, no. Limiting well, the duration of uh, bus runs itself is a worthy goal, you know, in and of itself, regardless of any of the other things we're talking about. Right, and, and we've heard from a number of parents as well, at, at least with the high school and maybe other schools. I mean, we have kids arriving here at 10 of 7 for a 725 start, so um, that alone so would be a... Um, 
Good. Just process-wise, uh, does the district tell the bus company exactly what they want in terms of runs and stops? I mean, is there interplay between? I mean, there's interplay. The right way to say it is yes, there's interplay. So we have the ability to add a bus. We have the ability to reduce bus runs. But there is a really collaborative and iterative process in identifying the runs. Okay. And stops. Yes. And stops. Very often, right, uh, a family may go directly to the bus company to request a change in stop. Um, Mr. Peterson works in district with us. He is the contact in district in Mr. Bowden's office who works directly with the bus manager. Um, and we've had, a, we've had a very good relationship with the bus contractor. And most recently, we've had a very good experience with this recent manager who we have on site, on ground historically. Um, our Guilford manager has moved up and become the regional manager. So Joe Parisi did a very good job for us locally for a long time. He's not, we've got a good relationship, and it's very collaborative. Well, I want to say as a resident pediatrician, since this in part was pushed by the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, I certainly am opposed to anything that's quick and dirty. Uh, the quick part uh, you've addressed in this um, proposal in that in order to really work, even if we don't change anything, is to have maximum community education and input and discussion. And it's April, and it's not going to happen right. for September, but giving us 15 months makes sense. So that eliminates the quick. In terms of dirty, nobody wants anything dirty. <laughs> so I, I applaud this deliberative approach, setting out steps. and. Uh, well, I'm opposed to volunteering for too much. I'll volunteer to be on the working group of EOE and teachers and so on. Thank you very much. I will note that both the American Association of School Nurses and um, students from Baldwin have weighed into the debate, and they are both in support of later start times. <laughs> That's important. Okay, so do you need anything from us then? or is uh, No, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you, and I do appreciate the support for the direction. Okay. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to apprise the board of was to remind the, um, the board and the community that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the community center, the annual town budget meeting will be held. Um, we anticipate that at that meeting, um, both the town budget and our school budget will be moved forward to referendum, which is scheduled for April 21st here in town. That'll be finalized tomorrow evening. Um, I do want to note again for the board and for the community um, that that is soon after our return from April vacation. Um, so I do want to take this opportunity to remind everybody who's watching um, that this is one of the lowest school budgets that we have brought in as a board in, in the last six years. Um, that said, this budget continues to focus on the importance of learning and instruction and moves our work forward. Um, I am proud of this budget. I appreciate the collaboration of the Board of Finance and all the hard work of this board. And I would encourage everybody watching this broadcast to mark April 21st on your calendar and be sure to participate in the referendum on that date. We discussed this in the operations subcommittee, but um, you know, one of the things that we want to reiterate is that the, a lot of the funds for the high school are in this budget. I believe 62% is the number I've heard, but certainly over the majority of funds um, that the town will expend on the new high school are part of this budget. They're bonded, and they're bonded over 20 years at very good rates, um, better than anticipated when we voted for the, for the project. Um, so that's that's starting to come in, but um, you know it's important to support that and, and to continue to support what's in the schools. So please do come out and vote. Yeah, I think that's an incredibly important that's point. Incredible. That the the debt service that's part of this overall budget, um, this high school, although the community is beginning to pay for this high school, they're paying less than was advertised, than was projected when they were asked to vote for the high school at referendum, um, and that is due to. Um, a positive climate, but also really due to some really skillful managing of those debts at the town level. And it's exciting that we're getting a school of this quality and the community is actually getting it for less than well, we were asked. You know, it's a combination of many things. Uh, construction costs stayed low. Yep. We thought they were going to, right. it was a good time to buy, yep. a good time to build, frankly. Uh, interest rates have stayed low. Uh, the town has been, I agree 100% with you, the town has really done some very good work and, and re. Uh, refinancing some existing bonds, getting some bonds paid off. And so 
Um, the, the budget increase this year is projected to be less than 3 percent, and that includes, as, as Dr. Moore said, 60, a little over 60 percent of the bonds for the new high school are already in. And the state reimbursement, by the way, which we said we would get if we approved it the month we did, uh, uh, has held up. So it, it's been a combination of many, many different things that have, have really turned, and the hard work of the building committee has really been astounding. They, they, that, is, that is a hawkish group uh, in, terms of, <laughs> in terms of keeping an eye on things. That's true. Okay, good. So we yeah, want to make, remind everybody to vote on April 21st. And that would conclude my report. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, 9.1 on the board agenda is tacked on personnel items. First of all, there are two resignations. Joseph Poli, Joseph Sapoli, who's a math teacher, uh, here at the high school, and Maria Carreri, who is our math specialist district-wide. Is there a motion that we ratify those resignations? So moved. Can we refuse to ratify? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder if that allows. What, allowed. Next. Yeah, we to what say would happen no. if we said no? Well, I guess we <laughs> could, but I think the 13th, 13th Amendment. Amendment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Leave it to the lawyers these days. <laughs> <laughs> the anti-slavery amendment seems to <laughs> may, may have some implication here. I mean, you know, it, it really, I think Dr. Moore is right. It's really hard to overstate what both of these uh, individuals have meant to the district. Uh, Mr. Zapoli has been an outstanding teacher uh, here at the high school. He's done great work with the uh, AP uh, program, really resuscitated it, as, uh, as I, mean, I understand it. As I understand it, I mean, I don't know when the BC was in place before he got here, but he pretty much built the current BC calculus program. Mr. Zapoli has almost single-handedly offered the AP Calc program since he has been here, and he, he will be missed sorely. And Ms. Carreri, I <laughs> think, we, uh, has, has, been, has really uh, done great work during some very, very complicated times, yep. shall we say, relating to mathematics instruction. But uh, I think we're all, we all recognize uh, the hard work that she did and, and, and how uh, uh, the district has really been moving in the right direction uh, in mathematics. Um, Both deserve our thanks and appreciation. So notwithstanding the, there was a second to that, Dr. Moore? Uh, <laughs> second with I'm regrets. not going to second it. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it. All right. So with, with those uh, recognizing the, uh, that we're not happy about either one of these, is uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Do you want to abstain, Dr. Moore? <laughs> 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 wouldn't, wouldn't solve anything, I suspect. Yeah. So is the CalPC program going to, is there a, a plan to keep yes. it moving? We have already advertised. We already have interesting candidates. At this point, I will tell you that I am very hopeful um, that the reputation of Guilford High School, the <laughs> knowledge that we are moving into an IB um, future in the the high school that we will be housed in will draw us competitive salaries. I will go to something that Mrs. Dudley has said before. I have not limited Mr. Macenti to a first or second year hire. In this case, he knows that he has the ability to hire a teacher with the proper experience and the proper resume to come in and continue the work that's been done in this area. We fully intend to continue to meet the student requests for this course. You know, you mentioned something. I think maybe if you could just update us moving forward on whether the IB program at the high school makes a difference in recruitment of faculty. That's I an think it will. Thought. I think that I think that Guilford. All right, I'm jaded, but I think Guilford schools in general draws talent from around this state, and we have seen it in some of our. Our, our higher level administrative positions, you know that we have talented individuals who are driving a distance to be part of the team that we have. I think that Guilford High School particularly is sitting at a really exciting moment to be moving into that new building, um, to be on the, the, the cusp of an, ID pro, an IB program in addition to the reputation that we've developed around, around AP, around really exciting instructional pedagogy, around theater, around athletics, around everything. Yes, I think that we will draw talent to Guilford High School. Yeah, the one thing I would comment on um, as we're doing new hires and looking at AP and IB is just to be cautious about the co-seating. And there was a communication, I probably should have mentioned a communications that I received. I'll try to forward to the board um, from an experienced teacher at an IB implementation, just really saying that co-seating um, you know, well, I guess it may be necessary in some cases that you really would like to try to avoid that because it kind of dilutes both programs. Um, you know, so I, I just think we ought to be cognizant of that as we're, we're looking at these hires, you know, thinking about which AP programs 
we you know are going to be able to support you know, realistically versus you know IP. Agreed. Okay. Uh, also, we have two resignations for the purposes of retirement. Two long-time teachers uh, right. at the high school. Uh, Cheryl Kling, art teacher, 38 years of service to Guilford, and uh, Bob Sawyer, Robert Sawyer, um, a science teacher with 34 years of service to the high school. So that is a lot. These are of two people that will be sorely missed. Right. Uh, they've contributed a lot. Um, they, I, I think of graduation without Bob Sawyer is not <laughs> going to be quite the same. the same. Well, you and you can, it reflects his popularity among students, but also his excellence as an instructor. And of course, Cheryl Kling has, uh, I see many of her um, art uh, work around town and in competition. And, and she, uh, besides being a, uh, a wonderful uh, art teacher, she uh, puts out a lot of, uh, uh, is a great role model for artists, and uh, she will be sorely missed. Two, two people who have really shaped their programs in this, in this community over decades. Um, uh, artwork from Cheryl's students has been at the Cape Cap conferences that you've attended, yet yes. they've both really left a mark in this community and will be sorely missed. So that's a motion that we ratify these. Uh, well, I guess I guess so. Retirement's <laughs> pretty good, so I guess I would recommend it. Okay. Well, second. <laughs> Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Uh, item 9.3, I think we're up to, which yeah. is to act on approve a $2,891 donation from the baseball booster group at, for a salary for an assistant coach. That's at the varsity high school level, I take it? That's correct. Okay, is there a motion we approve that? So move. Second. Any Second. discussion, questions, comments? To, you know, I'm just going to say my, my typical comment about user fees, so, you know, that if we had pay-to-play uh, fees, things like this would, I believe, be challenged. Uh, uh, so the, the, the parents and the community does a great deal, do a great deal for uh, athletics uh, that is completely outside the budget. This is just another example of that. So. With those comments and with the thanks uh, to the Baseball Booster Group, uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 9.4 we've done. Uh, 9.5, which is to receive the annual audit reports. We did talk about this to a degree in the Operations Committee meeting. Um, we do not vote on this. This is something that the Board of Finance is responsible for, and we've been given copies of the uh, the <coughs> audit reports. Uh, Ms. Trudeau, do you want to just summarize anything about the reports that you think you should bring to our attention? Um, Beyond, well, we've, you've already done this, obviously, in the Operations Committee to a degree, right. but is there something you'd like to emphasize? Um, the audit reports are what the what Boone Shapiro calls a clean audit, so they did not find any issues or any material items that were um, anything that they felt needed to be brought to our attention. So it's, it's a good audit report. They did issue a management letter, um, but it had... It, topics of timeliness of getting material that is needed for the audit from outside vendors. And they also recommend um, that the town and Board of Ed consider a fraud audit. Um, not that this is anything that they feel is warranted specifically for Guilford. It is something they are recommending to all of their clients. So there was nothing in our audit that generated this comment. Okay. I, you know, we can do whatever we want tonight. We can talk about it tonight. We can. I know everybody just got it, so if you want to take a look at it and we can add it to next month's agenda if people want to ask specific questions about it. One thing that's it. worth mentioning is discussed in operations committee is just the estimate of the pension funding in the audit, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is very close to 100%, which is a little different than some of the other communications we've received. It's good news if it's correct, but uh, we're trying to, I guess, figure that out. There are two <laughs> figures that have been put around. One is the, by the Milliman Company uh, earlier this year <coughs> that said that we were about 89, 88% funded uh, in terms of their actuarial assumptions. Bloom Shapiro, the entity that did the audit, uh, says that they believe we are 98.5% funded. Mr. Sands has kindly volunteered to raise this issue with the <laughs> Pension Committee on Wednesday and say, Get some, get, some, uh, get some guidance from the Pension Committee about what its uh, current position is. And uh, either way, the good news is that we are, we're not in bad shape either way. We're either in really good shape or in manageable shape. Uh, so, um, 
so yeah, and actually the town, one of the town units, the bigger of the town units is, according to Bloom Shapiro, 102% funded. So we'd like some input from the pension committee, Mr. Sands. I will, I will endeavor to uh, have a report. <laughs> <laughs> We'd appreciate that. Mr. Boss, I would only add, and I didn't add this in the operations committee, I wanted to wait to do it with the full board, but I just want to note the importance of a clean audit report and note the work that goes into bringing that in year after year after year for us. And I want to commend Mrs. Trudeau for the work that she does. Tracking our finances is a Herculean effort. She does a wonderful job, and I think that she deserves our thanks and appreciation publicly and wanted to note that here tonight. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. We have read around uh, in one that there are some school districts around that have some trouble yes. with uh, <laughs> keeping, <laughs> keeping track of their money. Uh, it's not so a good thing. It's not a good thing. <laughs> no. And so, uh, no, we've been very, very well served uh, in, in the operations and uh, and this audit report is just evidence of that. I, I, I should completely share your comments. Great, thank you. Um, so we can either, you, you, we can, if people want to put this on the agenda for May, I'm happy to do that. If otherwise you've got it and we can, anybody I, I has any, what, whatever people want to do, take a look at it and if you want to talk about it more, we can. If not, uh, Great. we don't have to. Uh, policy committee is yes. 9.6. Yes. So. At our last meeting, uh, these were received items. We're now, um, the policy committee is asking that the board act on these. This is graduation requirements, policy number 6310, and um, the accompanying regulation um, 6310. The changes um, are to really um, address the change from um, the capped assessment. We still have a capped assessment for science um, at, the, at the high school level, but we are looking at now at Smarter Balanced. And so the policy change reflects uh, a textual change from identifying caps specifically to identifying assessments, and then states that the statewide master examination um, that part of the graduation requirement um, is the statewide mastery examination and participation in the mathematics and English language arts statewide mastery um, tests. The regulation echoes these changes um, because the um, because the changes have been made. 1.4 of the regulation has been entirely struck. It does not um, apply and does not need to be stated. Uh, 1.2 makes again the textual change and identifies that beginning with the class of 2016, unless an alternative is provided by the superintendent designee, all students must participate in the language arts and mathematics assessment of the statewide mastery examination and meet or otherwise exhibit proficiency on the science statewide mastery examination. So this is what we are going to be voting on tonight. Okay, questions, comments? Is 2016, is that the right year? That's, that's juniors this year? Correct. So the, they would be taking it now, right? Uh, they will be taking it in May. In May. Right. They are not taking the full cap as in the past, so they do not have a requirement to achieve proficiency on the three, the three tested areas. Um, because they're still taking this capped science, they must achieve proficiency in the science portion and must only participate in the math and language arts portions of the alternate assessment. And that's completely in alignment with state statute. Right. Okay. We, we did. Sh I think I shared with the board a memo that we got from the State Department of Education about about this issue generally. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I, I mean, just to summarize, this is actually not a change, frankly, is it? Because no. uh, under existing policy, that's the right. obligate the graduation requirement mm -hmm. is to achieve proficiency in all three of those areas. Which right. implicitly means you're going to take them, yes. I suppose, right? right? right. Uh, and so now, because they don't use proficiency, any proficiency anymore right. in the language arts and math section, that the proposal would be then to just change it to participate in. Right. Yes. Well, and and because we the reason we don't have proficiency is because um, we really don't have good benchmarks yet right. on this test, and that will take some time. Right. The CAPT was a older assessment when the state required that students reach proficiency, and this is a, we don't have that kind of 
benchmark or latitudinal or longitudinal data. Right. We're also utilizing a more generic phrase in anticipation of various names being given by the state for various testing. So now it's mm -hmm. using the statutory phrase statewide mastery examination, which captures everything that falls under that category so that hopefully we won't have to continuously change this policy and regulation for the reason that the title of the particular assessment has changed. So the committee, the committee was unanimous in this? Yes. And the committee was Dr. Ballas Tracy, Mr. Kazin? Mr. Kazin and Mrs. Dudley. Okay. okay, are there other questions or comments? All right. Is there a motion? Is that a motion to approve these? That is a motion. Uh, is there, there, is, I guess what? Just the policy first, uh, which would be 9.6.1, the revision to policy number 6310? Yes. Second. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. 9.6.2. Is that a motion? Also a motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. We'll see what the state has in store for us. <laughs> Did you hear anything about anything happening in Hartford that might be of assistance to us in any material way? By the way, I, I should. This is a little off topic. On the other hand, in general or on this topic, <laughs> <laughs> on, on any topic related to our mission. Yes, uh, I would tell you that there's actually one bill pending about which I'm fairly excited. There's a bill pending in front of the Education Committee on which I provided testimony that in fact is suggesting that um, the state form a task force, that's not the exciting part, um, but that this task force in fact be charged with reviewing and thoughtfully examining all mandates, reforms, and initiatives that are out or will be rolling out for education in the state and that we try to organize, prioritize, and create some sense of coherence among the work that we are being asked to do. Language like timelines is being discussed. Um, so one, while I think that that is an exciting idea that, that the Ed Committee is talking about being that thoughtful, um, I also think that it's exciting because a lot of the language that is, is reflected in the bill, um, we talked about over lunch at Baldwin not long ago. Um, so Senator Kennedy invited all of the superintendents and board chairs in his district to, to lunch and brought Senator Slosberg, the new co-chair of the Ed Committee. And we talked about things just like that, about slowing down and trying to be thoughtful and intentional about lots of good things, because you can still get buried under lots of good things if they're all happening piecemeal. Um, and so it was really sort of refreshing to see a bill proposed that had language in it that I, in fact, recognized from some conversations that I had been lucky enough to be part of. So yeah, it, there, there are a few things up there that seem a little exciting. I think we will have the announcement of a new commissioner um, in the next few weeks, um, and I think that's exciting. Um, I hope to um, get the commissioner's ear as soon as possible to talk to him or her about the good work that's being done in Guilford and find ways to continue that good work, which doesn't get us in trouble. <laughs> yeah, Both I think worthy goals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. 10.1, policy committee. Anything uh, else nothing happens? Else. All right. Okay. Uh, 10.2, operations committee. I think we went over it. Uh, curriculum instruction and assessment, we did meet, and we've got another meeting coming up. Scheduled a special meeting before your workshop coming up in two weeks. We will uh, table the next uh, policy, policy meeting, and we'll have a CIA meeting in its place. So we anticipate the agenda will be rich with math sequencing. April 20th? No. no. It's the week uh, after. It's week after. It'll be the fourth Monday. 27th. Thank okay. you. Uh, so, uh, so, the curriculum okay. committee meeting would be at 6 o'clock on the 27th, right. and the What's agenda that? item would be math sequencing. And, and, if, and if the board approves, I'd like to bring some reflections on the Borland report to that meeting as well. I think, in fact, that it dovetails yeah. with the idea of math sequencing and the conversation about math sequencing. Where is that going to be? Jones. 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 Okay. Start early. Oh, it's good for you. Um, not good for the topic to the workshop. <laughs> one of the topics to follow in the workshop is technology. We'll be one talking about meetings. Google Docs, Google Classroom, and some of our Chromebook work with Mr. Mitchell and uh, Mr. Murtag and Dr. Keene. Okay. 
Um, and there may be a few business items that we need to add to the like agenda it. that we mentioned in yeah. operations. Okay. Uh, 10.4 of the committee uh, report, or the uh, high school building committee liaison. I shared a PowerPoint that uh, Mr. Masseni had put together, somebody had put together. Um, it looks like it's kind of getting close. It the, looks the, the PowerPoint was really exciting and, in fact, already dated. So all of the taping that you saw on all the new sheetrock has been painted over. So the building is beginning to take a finished feel. Um, cabinetry and millwork is going in. Uh, floor finishes, ceiling finishes are going in. It, it is very exciting. Um, we have hired, the building committee has hired on a move coordinator. Uh, Mr. Macenti will begin meeting with the move coordinator this week. Um, so that will begin really getting down to the, the detail about which boxes go to which room in our new school and which items travel with us and which ones will be left behind or passed on to some other school. Uh, the BC meets again tomorrow night, and the, the focus of that topic is really to start the work of the, the move manager, and you're really getting to, to some of the end game when, when that piece starts coming along. It's lonely in here without the shields. I know, I was <laughs> noticing yes, that right. too, actually. It's, right. it's looking empty. Are they being digitized? Yep, we're digitizing <laughs> the shields for future presentation. You've seen the uh, granite shield that was inspired by the work around 1914, 15, 16. It, it, it combines elements from multiple years. Uh, the BC approved an attempt to remove and save the Sibley. Um, I need to point out that the work is not guaranteed in any way. Mm. So we're going to attempt to save the Sibley, but we're not sure that that's going to happen. Uh, teachers are beginning to clear out closets and pack classrooms. It's really beginning to get to the end stages. It's very exciting. I've, I've got to ask, I think Dr. Moore raised this issue, or uh, the motto? The, the, the motto, and there's been some us, discussion tell us about the, it. Tell us what you think that translates to. It was drawn directly from the 1914 shield, and the best literal, literal translation that we have is not victory, but achievement. That is the best, most literal translation, word for word, not victory, but achievement, um, and in fact, I just pulled <laughs> victory well, and achievement. <laughs> I, I, I pulled a TED talk from John Wooden, who talks about the difference between winning and success, and it really pairs very nicely. And so, I think as we write about it and sort of launch the opening, I'm already picturing an art direction that has a link to a John Wooden TED talk. It's the difference between succeeding or winning, and I, I sort of like it. And it came directly. I, I, from I also kind of like no triumph without knowledge. I like that one too, yeah, but apparently that was a more liberal <laughs> translation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the said is usually the but, but it can. Said is but, not but. without, yeah. Yeah, right. As long as somebody who speaks Latin is, is comfortable, <laughs> if that's what right. it says, that's it's all. It's carved in stone, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody right. speaks. Well, somebody must. <laughs> so we've got a literal and one with a little more artistic <laughs> license, and I like them both. All right, that's as long as they work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and still under budget from what we're being told, and we talked a little I, bit about the... Uh, I have been asked to shape that message to say that the building is on time and on budget. Okay. Um, there's some sensitivity to being okay. under budget, but we are on well, budget. Unless they are going to spend every nickel that, that uh, <laughs> was appropriated, which seems unlikely. Um, exactly. But, but they are doing a fabulous job. They're doing a very good they job. Are, they, that is that is a committee that I you know I, every every time we go to the meetings I remind them that they probably it was misrepresented to them how much work was going to oh, be involved well. in it. Uh, <laughs> but they have they have really done an outstanding job. And we'll continue to meet for a full year after Just the ribbon cutting, right? I mean, so yeah. we do, it'll be worth remembering them after we've been living in the yeah. school for six months. Right. <laughs> Um, and I should say, by the way, on the town on the shields, they are not being discarded. Uh, they are being retained. Uh, with, if there is another, there, there's going to be alternative uh, or the ability to to figure out alternates. Yes, um, they're going into storage. They're going to be digitally recorded prior to that, but then they're going into storage so that we can draw <coughs> from them and continue to to have them available to us. Yep. Uh, any town committee liaison reports? Anything on? Land acquisition or? Met last week, no Board of Ed business. No, nope. keep it that way. We're not anticipating <laughs> any Board of Ed business. Is there any update on the fields? It's been a remarkably long period of time to not start 
spring sports. <laughs> yeah, the fields all over the state are just yeah. wet, and yeah, so our, our crew team can act it on the lake because I was just it's gonna still say, under and, ice. And they're supposed to have a fight? Yeah, yeah there's, a like there's a regatta. There's a regatta. Like Wednesday. <laughs> there's oh, no, regatta this, this week. Weekend. This yeah, week, yeah, and they can't, and it's a little That's not happening. Yeah, yeah it's a little <laughs> challenging. And the golf Part team of it is, is uh, <laughs> most of it is still iced in, and the fields are are still mostly wet and unplayable in most areas. We've been getting a lot of use on the turf field. I've seen lacrosse teams out practicing at eight o'clock at night, so I think we're trying to just keep that field running as much as we can. Um, and my junior just lacrosse team, Killingworth, hasn't been on the field yet either. <laughs> the golf team has lost its um, Madison home and is going to. Um, Middletown, uh, Lyman oh, wow. Orchards, uh, which also is an open, so all the tryouts were conducted on the uh, rubber tees. Oh, great. <laughs> wow. And um, the first meet has been postponed, which was supposed to be Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been rough out there. So last day of school as of now is June 19th. 19th. Um, Did we have any luck about uh, uh, lakes with their issue? I remember they, they've got an extra day because of the roof? No, there's really, yeah, Mr. Bloss had asked us to look into creative ways. Um, Mrs. Hale has already scheduled um, the last day of school for them. Um, they're going to have an additional one half day session beyond everybody else. Um, there's really a lot of restriction over coming in on a Saturday or doing something creative. So she's already communicated to the parent community. I believe they're ready to go. Um, I don't think we'll set a record for attendance, but I know that they will have have a positive and a good day. Jones did it a couple of years ago. No, I know. When, we, yeah. when the hurricane, uh, Jones, right. somebody exactly. was without power, and the, di the issue was do we open the entire district right. when one school couldn't do it, right. and we, I right. think we decided to go ahead. And yet you're right, Jones. And you did just remind me, Mr. Bloss, of the other business item that I may ask to have added to the April. And now that we are past April 1st, the board can take formal action on a graduation date, and even pending another snowstorm or anything that would cause us to close school in, at Guilford High School, we, you can hold to that set graduation date after. So I will ask um, at the workshop meeting to just have you briefly officially set the graduation date as April 19th, and then no matter what happens, June. You, sorry, yeah. June. June. <laughs> and, uh, it's got to be after April 1st to set the June graduation. A lot of kids would be happy. But, I was just gonna say, <laughs> but then Teach even if we lose a day, then the graduation date, even though it will be less than 180 days of contact, you can still hold. That do you want to do that tonight? Is there any reason not to do that tonight, or is it tempting fate, or should we wait for the snow? It has to, to be after April 1st if you wanted to add to that add as an agenda. Yeah. No, no, we didn't understand. advertise it's it on the agenda. agenda. Do we have to add it to the agenda? We would have, we have to add it to the agenda. We have to make a motion to add it to the agenda. Yeah. Is there any reason not to? There's no reason not to. I just didn't want to rush it onto the agenda. I hadn't thought of it until just the last couple of days. I don't think we're going to lose a day of school between now. All right, let, let's just do it at the workshop yeah. meeting. That's fine. But but the I'll the expectation really is snows next week. And yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, that, that that's true. We would feel responsible. But the <laughs> so but the expectation <laughs> is that the, the graduation will be June 19. That's yes. correct. Okay. Okay. Anything else from town committees? Item 11. Public questions. Anybody? All right. Suzanne, you don't want to ask a question? We'd be glad to. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, we do have a short executive session on we are go entering into negotiations with the nurses uh, union. So we will, is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All in the favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We will then uh, go into executive session for that. We will come out back into public session solely for the purpose of adjournment. We will have no further public votes this evening. Thank you very much.